Limiting reactants are also sometimes called limiting reagents. The limiting reactant, which I will abbreviate from now on as LR, is the reactant that runs out first. In any reaction in the real world, almost always one of the reactants runs out before the other or others. And because a chemical reaction has to stop as soon as any of the reactants are used up, the amount of everything depends on the limiting reactant, the amount of the other reactant that is consumed, the amount of the other reactant that's left over, the amount of products that are made. When we need to, it's very important that we are able to calculate the limiting reactant. Any reactant that we don't run out of is called an excess reactant. How to find the limiting reactant? Now, there are any number of ways that this can be done. I'm going to teach it a certain way. If you know of a different way that gets you the right answer every time, then feel free to use it. I am not suggesting that this is the only way. For me, this is the quickest and simplest way, so I'll present just this way. For the generic reaction, reactant A plus reactant B yields a product. Assume that the amounts of reactant A and reactant B are given. Should you use the amount of A or the amount of B in your calculations? In what I call straight stoichiometry calculations, we are just given the amount of one reactant and we're told that we have excess of everything else. Well, if the amounts of, say, two reactants are given, one of them is a limiting reactant, the other is an excess reactant, and the amount of product is going to depend not on the excess reactant but on the limiting reactant. How do we know which of the, say, two reactants we should use when we're doing our calculations? Well, we need to determine the limiting reactant, and Paolo, the recipe man, is going to help us. Here are the steps that I use. First, calculate the number of moles of reactant A and reactant B that you have. Second, divide those numbers of moles by the respective coefficients in the balanced equation. And thirdly, the reactant that has the smaller result is the limiting reactant. So let's try this problem. First of all, how do we know by looking at it that it is a limiting reactant problem? And the answer is we know because the quantities of all the reactants are given. If this were what I call a straight stoichiometry problem, only one of the reactants quantities would be given. But here, both reactant quantities are given, and for that reason, we need to take into account this limiting reactant idea. Because, if you look in the upper right, how many grams of water are formed, that number will depend only on one of these two reactant quantities that are given. So like I said, there are several ways to find the limiting reactant. I'm going to use the method that I talked about on the previous slide. And that method is as follows. We're going to convert all of the reactant amounts into moles. From the periodic table, the molar mass of H2 we can find to be 2 gram. Those units cancel. 13 divided by 2 is 6.5 moles of H2. And I write the word have underneath that because that's how much we have to start with. We're going to do the same thing with oxygen. The molar mass of oxygen is twice 16, so that's 32. 80 divided by 32 is 2.5 moles of oxygen. And again, I write the word have because that's how much we have. That's step one. Step two, then, is divide each of those numbers of moles by the respective coefficient for that substance in the balanced equation. At the top of the screen, you can see in the upper left that the coefficient in front of the H2 is a 2. So I'm going to take 6.5 and divide by 2, and I'm going to take 2.5 moles of oxygen and divide by the unwritten coefficient of 1 that's in front of the O2. 
that's going to leave this number 3.25 and 2.50. The purpose of those two numbers is to decide which is the limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is the smaller of those two numbers, which means that for this problem, O2 is the limiting reactant. From that point on, any calculation that we make must start with the amount of limiting reactant. What we can do is, like Austin Powers, we can O behave and start every calculation with the limiting reactant. This is another reason I write the word have underneath the amounts of reactants that I have because that reminds me to behave and start every calculation with the amount of limiting reactant, not excess reactant, that we have. On our stoichiometry island diagram, moles of oxygen is this island right here. And we need to calculate grams of water. Our island diagram mental model boils down to starting with two and a half moles of oxygen and using two conversion factors. You see here with Austin Powers, it says O oh, behave and start every calculation with the limiting reactant. Is there anything wrong with up here at the top of the screen starting with 80 grams of oxygen? Because we did say that oxygen is the limiting reactant. And the answer is no. There's no reason why you couldn't do that. However, now in the lower right, if you look at this island diagram, that would mean that we're starting again at mass island for oxygen. We would have to convert to moles of oxygen, then moles of water, then grams of water. Well, with this work that we did, where all of this yellow is, we've already converted to moles of oxygen. So why repeat that work? Okay, the first bridge to cross is the one that requires us to use the coefficients in the balanced equation. So at the top of the screen we have one mole of O2 for on the right every two moles of water. We put moles of O2 in the denominator of that conversion factor so that those units will cancel. And then whenever we use one of these uppermost bridges we have to use the molar mass of that substance. And using the periodic table we know that the molar mass of H2O is 18 grams. Notice how those units nicely cancel and I put a little point there to represent that that zero is a significant figure because if you look at the top of the screen 80 point has two sig figs and so our answer should also have two.